genuine happiness is something that takes maybe years or potentially decades to understand. So I'm sorry to say I can't give you a very easy definition. My own experience of it evolves over time. And in fact, I think to even know genuine happiness, we have to really start to develop a clear understanding of what are our underlying goals and purpose in life? What do we think is worth living for? This is a simple question, and yet we often come up with very abstract ideas. Oh, I'm here to help other beings. I am here to have a meaningful life, whatever that means. With genuine happiness, we start to bring this idea of what is important into our everyday activities, even into our moment-to-moment -moment activities. So if I have, I had a lecture earlier today, and I came back and had an hour and a half in the hotel, right? And I think, what will be the most nourishing for me? What will make me genuinely happy? Not just what will satisfy my immediate needs. Should I watch something on Netflix and eat a pizza? Maybe have a beer? Ah, oh, that would be so great. But would that actually satisfy my desires? Or I could choose something, oh, I'm just going to sleep. I'm just going to sleep completely. I'm going to spend that whole time asleep, but not noticing that there's tension in my shoulder and there's aching in my, in my hips from just walking around all day and having a bit of tenderness in my body. So to make these decisions that are wise for ourselves of, okay, I'll do a little rest, I'll do a little yoga. It may not be what I want to do. Maybe I just want to just get lazy and relax. So genuine happiness helps us motivate through our everyday activities in a way that really nourishes us. And I think familiarizing ourselves with what's good and what's caring is so natural. It's so natural. And yet we can be very distracted by hedonic enjoyment, as well as by pressure from society, or pressure from our family, or pressure from our workplace. So we think of what's genuine happiness, and I think it's very natural. But what gets in the way of our genuine happiness? I think we can have this idea, I could have spent that hour and a half working. I have so much work to do. <laughs> I really do, like everybody. And if I spent that whole hour and a half working, it would appease the part of me that wants to be successful, right? I want to be really good as an academic. I want to finish my research papers. And it's one-sided. It's not seeing my entire goals or purposes of truly leading a life that's kind to myself and being of service to others. So I think hedonic pleasures can also get in the way. Um, desire to appease our moment-to-moment -moment experience of enjoyment. And hedonic pleasures are much more reliably enjoyable, right? If I watched a movie, it would feel good immediately. Whereas doing yoga for the first 15 minutes, I was like, uh, tired. <laughs> so it takes a little bit more of that deep level motivation. Because no one's there to watch me. No one's there to see, is this good? Is, is Eve doing what she should do? She's going to teach a class tonight on emotional balance. Is she being balanced? We have to internalize this goal, this aspiration that we are truly happy and flourishing. This is why I think it can take years and for us to really get a sense of what that looks like in our everyday life. Um, I'm not sure if there's a shortcut. I do think that the more we practice genuine happiness and the things that lead to it, the more thirst we have for it. It becomes something we long for. Our hedonic enjoyment, it kind of naturally subsides. Like, yeah, I could have watched the movie and um, eaten the pizza, but right now I'd feel pretty disgusting. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't feel good. I would notice that that hedonic pleasure didn't lead to genuine happiness. And, being able to be present and communicate myself clearly.